I don't know if it's just me, but memory management never feels great. Sure, if you're an alpha developer, you can choose to allocate and free heap memory yourself, but this usually increases the chance of a memory leak, and to be honest, it's kind of a pain. A lot of popular languages choose to run a separate program to collect all unused memory. This means that we don't really have to think about the heap anymore, but it comes with a big performance cost. Garbage collected languages will almost always be slower than non-garbage collected ones. But that's not what bothers me the most. What I hate the most about garbage collection is that my program is not deterministic, or at least not in a way that I understand. There will always be these seemingly random pauses, and even ones that may stop my whole program. If I'm going to use a garbage collector, I want to understand what the collector is doing, at least on a high level. But before we can understand how they work, we need to understand why we even need them in the first place. This is a program that requires no manual memory management and no garbage collection. This is not that impressive because all these variables are fixed length. Fixed length variables can be stored on the stack. The stack usually does a good job of managing itself by pushing and popping values as necessary, although the stack still needs some management. I'm sure we've all seen a stack overflow exception. Some values, like strings and lists, have a dynamic length that grows over time. These variable length variables cannot be stored on the stack and are stored on the heap instead. These are the variables that need to be managed. Why do we need memory management at all though? Why can't we manage heap memory automatically just like we do the stack? Scope in programming languages should provide enough information to determine when a value can be freed. For example, this code block. Nothing can access the name variable after this function finishes, and the name can automatically be freed when this scope finishes. The problem is that not all code looks like this. How would this automatic free algorithm work when returning a string that's created within this scope? There is no way to tell when the returned value has finished being used. Here is another example where a pointer is being manipulated by a child scope. An array of strings is a pointer of pointers and pointers added within the child scope need to be kept alive as long as the parent is. Because pointers can be passed around freely, you cannot have an algorithm that automatically frees unused memory at compile time. You may think that this kind of code is bad practice, and that maybe we should avoid this pattern in general. Maybe even create a stricter language that forces the user to clearly define ownership of heap allocated data at compile time and prevent these edge cases altogether. If you do think that, then you would probably like Rust, because that's exactly what the borrow checker does. But I don't want to talk about Rust's approach to memory management today. I want to take a look at garbage collection. All variables are stored on the stack, either as a raw value or as a pointer. All memory addresses can be referenced as integers, so a pointer is just an integer with the added semantic knowledge that it references a memory address. A very simple garbage collector could just find all integers on the stack and assume that they point to a memory address, and then clear all unused memory. All memory that is in use will be referenced on the stack, either as a primitive or as a pointer. In practice, this is called the mark and sweep method, and it has the following steps. First, we identify the relevant memory regions. In our case, this is just finding the stack and the heap. We assume all the memory in the heap is freeable, then we loop through the stack and find anything that looks like a pointer and mark that block of memory as used, since it is used by the stack. If the pointer contains more pointers, then we also mark those children as used. Once all the used memory has been marked, we can sweep all the unused memory and free it. This is a very basic garbage collector, but it works. Its main shortcoming is that it cannot be performed while the program is actively running, since the changing stack would cause the logic to break. This is commonly known as a stop the world collector, since everything else must stop. Its second shortcoming is that it is conservative, rather than precise. Since we sweep for anything that looks like a pointer, we may mistake a normal integer for a memory address. These look identical in the stack. We are not guaranteed to ever free all unused memory, which can be a problem. Modern languages address this by storing additional information when declaring a pointer. This extra information, commonly referred to as tags, can be used by the garbage collector to increase precision and efficiency. Fixing the stop the world issue is a bigger problem. Due to the way that this algorithm iterates through the stack, there is no way to perform collection without a full pause. Pointers can point to more pointers, and these risk changing out from under us if we do not stop the program. 
If we want to run continuous collection while the program is running, we're going to need a slightly more sophisticated algorithm. Instead of the two states of marked and unmarked, we need three states. Conceptually, these three states are commonly represented using three colors. At the start of a collection cycle, all root blocks of memory, for our purposes this is all the memory in the stack, are marked as gray. The rest of the memory is marked as white. We pick any gray block of memory, mark all of its children gray, and then mark it as black. We repeat this step until there are no more gray blocks. All the black memory is currently in use, while the white memory can be freed. Since we are not forced to deal with pointers of pointers immediately, this algorithm can run while the program is running. Unfortunately, this algorithm does not always eradicate the need for stop the world collection. Have a look at our newly collected heap. We cannot allocate a block of memory that is two pages long, even though we have two pages available. Our pages are disconnected and cannot be used for a continuous block of memory. A fragmented heap can also lead to performance issues, since the program may have to continuously jump between chunks of memory that are far from each other. A common solution to fragmentation is to move all the active memory to a continuous chunk. Not only does this increase performance and allow you to allocate more memory, it also reduces the number of free calls you have to make to the operating system. Obviously, this cannot be done without pausing program execution. In general, memory that was recently allocated is much more likely to be freed than memory that has already been in use for a long time. Garbage collection algorithms will often check newer memory more frequently to optimize CPU time. A newly allocated piece of memory will be checked frequently. If it is not freed, it will be moved to a different generation that is checked less frequently. If it is still not freed after some time, it may be moved to another generation where it is checked even less frequently. If you wanted to give these generations names, you may decide to just call them Gen 0, Gen 1, and Gen 2. So obviously, the Java generations are called New Space and Remembered Set. The New Space is split into Eden Space and Survivor Space, which is further split into Past Survivor Space and Future Survivor Space. Okay, Java. The last thing I'll leave you with is that if we use the first naive market sweep algorithm discussed, with much more memory than required, Garbage collection can actually be faster than stack allocation. This is because the mark and sweep algorithm only stores one bit to identify whether a variable can be freed or not. This makes it extremely efficient if you're doing more marking and less sweeping.